Hello Internet, and welcome to the first bonus video of Undertale. Yeah, the, the first. Uh, to be frank, there's so much that I want to talk about in relation to this game that it's going to end up getting three whole bonus videos, plus one for the No Mercy route if you're into that sort of thing. If you want to know what a bonus video will be going over, check the description for timestamps and they'll tell you what the topic of discussion is and when. I want to start today's episode by giving a summary, because Undertale's ending can be a bit confusing. This isn't a synopsis of the game's plot, but a summary of the backstory. A long time ago, after the war between humans and monsters, a single child named Kara, for the sake of this story, climbed Mount Ebbett and jumped in, likely intending to take their own life according to some not-so-subtle hints in post-game dialogue. Injured by the fall, but not dead due to landing in a pile of golden flowers, because that would definitely cushion a fall like that, they called out for help. Asriel, the son of King Asgore and Queen Toriel, heard the humans cry and ran to help them, taking them back to their home in the ruins. The Dreamer family nursed Kara back to health and adopted the human child as one of their own. The child became a symbol of hope for the monsters as a sign that not all humans wanted to kill them, and that there was hope for one day managing to shatter the barrier. Asriel and Kara were incredibly close, with Asriel considering Kara to be his best friend even despite the fact that they weren't a good person. Everything we hear about their friendship in-game implies that they did pretty much everything together and were inseparable. At some point, the entire family moved out of the ruins into the capital city of New Home, where at one point Asriel and Kara decided to make a pie for Asgore. However, after mistaking the instructions, saying cups of butter for buttercups, a poisonous type of flour, Asgore gets very sick after eating this, with Toriel getting angry, Asriel feeling bad, and Kara apparently laughing it off. Later on, Kara comes up with a plan with Asriel to free the monsters and shatter the barrier based on the illness that the buttercups caused Asgore. Asriel picks some buttercups, and Kara consumes them, making them ill and eventually killing them, allowing Asriel to absorb their soul after making their last wish to see the golden flowers from their village again. Asriel does absorb their soul, and Kara, controlling his body through this, uses their power to cross the barrier and make their way to their village. Humans see Asriel holding Kara's body and assume that he killed them, attacking him mercilessly and resulting in him being near the point of death. While control of his body was split between himself and Kara due to both of their souls being in his body, with Kara wanting to fight back and kill the humans, Asriel remains calm, simply taking Kara's body and stumbling back to the castle. He makes it to the garden in the throne room, collapses, and turns to dust on the first golden flower in the center of the room. This obviously shatters not only Asgore and Toriel, who lost both of their children in a single night, but the entirety of the underground as well. In a fit of anger, Asgore declares that he will kill any human who falls into the underground until he collects seven human souls enough to cross and destroy the barrier, and waging war on humanity. Toriel becomes disgusted with him for this decision, takes Kara's body, and leaves for the ruins again, where she gives Kara a proper burial under the bed of golden flowers they had originally fallen into. Asgore asks the new royal scientist Alphys to experiment on finding a new way to cross the barrier faster. She begins working on the determination experiments in the true lab, hoping to find a way to create determination, the only quality of a human soul that monster souls lack, and use that to artificially create seven souls to cross the barrier. These experiments go horrifically wrong, as we know, and cause the creation of the amalgamates. However, the most important part for our purposes is the vessel. Once she finished creating the souls, she would need a vessel to wield them and break the barrier. However, at the end of the day, even with determination, there's still monster souls, which monsters can't absorb. She decides an inanimate object without a soul is the best bet for a vessel, and decides to surprise Asgore by taking the golden flower Asriel's dust had been spread on and injecting it with determination. Injecting this flower with determination brings Asriel back to life, as his dust had spread on the flower before. However, due to the fact that Asriel didn't have a soul anymore, he couldn't feel any emotions and became Flowey, the main antagonist. Through his determination, Flowey had the power to use and load save points, allowing him the power to simply reset and do as he wished with the lives of any monster in the underground. He started by using the power for good, but eventually grew bored and developed a view of the world that he reiterates throughout the game. Kill or be killed. Flowey continues abusing this power for a very long time, with Asgore managing to kill six human children and obtain their souls at the same time. Eventually, though, the seventh human falls into the ruins in the same spot where Kara was buried. 
This human is Frisk, who we played as throughout the game. For some reason, Frisk is essentially controlled by Kara to a varying extent throughout the game depending on your actions. Depending on how violent you are, sometimes Kara will take over almost completely, while sometimes Frisk will remain themselves. It all depends on your choices. The reason Flowey and even Azrael at the end are so convinced that Frisk is Kara is because of the control that you, the player, who is essentially meant to be Kara, has over Frisk. That may not be the best explanation of things, but it's the best way I can really think to phrase it. As for how Azrael came back at the end, we know by the point when Flowey attacks all of your friends he has already absorbed the six human souls, and we also know that it would take the strength of nearly every single monster soul to equal the strength of one more human soul. In the end, Flowey does absorb nearly every single monster soul though, with Napstablook being the only monster who is confirmed to have avoided having his soul taken. This essentially means Flowey obtains all seven human souls, allowing him to regain his true form and compassion, along with enough power to essentially turn him into a god. And I think that about covers it. If you have any questions concerning anything not mentioned here, feel free to comment. I'll try to explain as best I can. However, ultimately, a lot of this game is up to interpretation. I tried to keep headcanon out of this, but I can't guarantee 100% accuracy on every paragraph here, so cut me some slack. Now, on to the next topic, which is completely live commentary. You won't be getting a lot of this in these bonus videos. So. At the end of the pacifist route, we discovered that the character we were playing as was Frisk. As you just learned by the summary, I guess, and knew before already because that was probably the most obvious part of the ending. That will put into perspective that when it says name the fallen human, we are actually naming the first one. However, what if instead of Kara, we decide to name the character Frisk? Warning, this name will make your life hell. Proceed anyway? Sure. Welcome to hard mode. I will be upfront and say, this is my first time ever doing this. Hard mode of Undertale? Well, we'll see. We can skip all this, this is exactly the same. If you go up here, this is where speedrunners go for Flowey, for Flowey's dialogue, because this is the fastest place you can get hit by a friendliness pellet. Then from here... I think down here. Why would anyone pass up an opportunity like this? Yeah, down here is where the circle closes in the fastest, so there you go. I hope it doesn't bother you too much that I will be skipping story in hard mode, but that's just because the story is the one thing that remains the same here. I'm going to be doing largely the same thing I did for the No Mercy videos, where I just cut around to things that are new and different. Because there's a surprising amount of stuff that is new and different. Oh, well, this is new and different. Toriel says she fears this may be more difficult than anticipated because the s switches you need to press are not labeled. The first switch is over on the wall. She'll still tell you, of course. It seems that is not the correct switch. Splendid. I am proud of you, little one. Let us move to the next room. As a human living in the underground, monsters may attack you. You will need to be prepared for this situation. However, worry not. The process is simple. When you encounter a monster, you will enter a fight. While you are in a fight, strike up a friendly conversation. Stall for time and I will come to resolve the conflict. Practice talking to the dummy. This time we're going to do the one thing we haven't done to this dummy. <laughs> you talk to the dummy. It doesn't seem much for conversation. Toriel seems happy with you. Ah, very good. You are very good. That's the first time I've shown what she actually wants you to do with the dummy. <laughs> so when Toriel says it's dangerous to explore by yourself, that is usually not correct. However, 
It says, take one. We'll take a piece of candy. It's still the monster candy. Heals 10 HP. Trust me, it is... Oh my god. I keep skipping new dialogue. Something about this hellish place. Something about only getting... to take three. But it does still have a distinct non-licorice flavor. There is an unused item that I personally believe is probably meant to show up here called Rock Candy. It heals 1 HP. Um... That doesn't seem correct. This song is called Stronger Monsters and it only plays in hard mode. Yeah, that song goes kinda hard and you just never hear it unless you enter hard mode, but... Uh... Yeah, so... The main difference in hard mode is that the enemies that appear are enemies from the core. Uh, there are some new enemies as well that are made to be variants of enemies that didn't get variants originally. Can you believe it? Yeah, I think so. Uh... Let's pray for whims a lot first. I want to get rid of this ring. Wow, that was actually sick. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, this is more dangerous than the core just because we don't have access to the healing items that we do in the core. Uh, you can likely remember in the ruins, we really don't have access to a lot of items that are good for healing items. Uh, we can technically get the spider donut and the spider cider, but since we're doing this pacifist... Actually, the enemies here are tougher, so we end up getting better items anyway. These encounters are tough. They do 5 HP with every hit. Which, like, is a quarter of your health, and you don't really get good armor at this point in the game. The best armor we're going to get is the uh, ribbon that we're going to get in the one of these upcoming rooms. Uh, so yeah. Until then, we're stuck with a bandage, which doesn't do anything. <laughs> I'm gonna need to heal again. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm s Hopefully this isn't too bad. Uh-oh. Yep. Okay. That's gonna be happening a lot. You cannot give up just yet. Frisk, stay determined. It is kind of nice seeing Frisk's name on that screen. Every battle here sort of feels like... Like, in a way, it just feels like a war to get to the next checkpoint every time. To get to the next save point, rather. Which, in a way, is cool, but also it's like, at this point, I'm just gonna be fleeing from monsters that aren't new, so... Yeah, I don't know. I have mixed feelings on this hard mode. I think it's cool in concept, but... Oh, well, Moldessa. This is a new monster. Fixing Moldessa is the way to make it sparable, and lying down will make all other monsters sparable aside from Moldessa. However, if we switch, we do get more gold for sparing it. Not something I really care about right now, but yeah. These are harder variants of Mold Small that technically already existed in Mold Big and Waterfall. However, Mold Big is pretty easy in comparison to this. You can see these bullet patterns are actually surprisingly, like, I guess, complicated in comparison. Also, terrifying spare sprite on these things. I gotta try to flee again. Okay. Yeah, so I gotta conserve on, he like, healing items like crazy, because this is... In insanely hard. Okay, Parsnick, another new enemy. This cobra-fied carrot has a head full of tasty snakes. Talking does nothing, hissing does nothing, devouring does the same thing that uh, devouring uh, Vegetoid does. 
Don't know why I forgot Vegetoid's name. And snacking is the way to spare. Same with uh, dinner for Vegetoid. So let's snack. Parsnick mishears you and fires a series of tasty snakes. Eat your greens, tasty snakes. Uh, okay. So it is sparable now. Uh, we're gonna devour it instead. You start eating snakes like they're spaghetti. You recovered 5 HP. This does not kill Parsnick in the same way uh, dinner does not kill Vegetoid. There was a save point right here. Okay, that was a bad waste of a healing item, but that's fine. Are they gone yet? Ghost keeps saying Zia loud repeatedly, pretending to sleep. Let's move it with force. Nabstabluk, I'm pretty sure is exactly the same. I suppose we'll see. But I don't think there's any difference with them. <laughs> no differences so far. Is this the same too? Yep. Let me try. I call it Dapper Bluk. Do you like it? Yeah. So Napsta Bluk is exactly the same. We'll take a spider donut. We need the healing items badly. And I'll save too, because I need to badly. I heard using F4 can make you have a full screen. Oh, I can do that now with this keyboard, by the way. I forget to constantly, and I don't want to anyway because I have my notes on the same monitor as the game, but I can go into full screen now. I've heard you are quite merciful for a human. Surely you know by now a monster wears a- Uh... Okay. It's bad. Really? Then I'll tell all of my friends to tell their friends' friends never use yellow names. How about that? No more yellow names. Okay, I will not let them know not to use yellow names. Bring them back. Huh? It's rather inconvenient that you changed your mind like this. Since I told everyone not to use yellow names, everyone threw theirs out. Well, last year it was fashionable to have pink names. I think everyone still has those in their closet somewhere. I'll ask everyone to look. But this is the last time. So now whenever we... Well, I guess I'll show it here. A line of Moldesas blocks the path. Okay. This could be terrifying. Uh, okay. This is manageable. Uh, so now the spare button is pink. Moldessa's name is pink. Oh, great. I didn't know they still had this bursting sort of attack. Okay. God, these fights are so hard, actually. I know it's called Stronger Monsters, but I guess I just didn't put together that it was called that for a reason. <laughs> uh, fixing makes it so it won't attack again, so there we go. Hello, I have a question. You like things other than butterscotch or cinnamon too, do you not? Oh, what am I asking? I will keep looking. A little interesting, she did not ask that in the original playthrough, so... Uh-oh. Finally equip the Faded Ribbon. We also get to keep the bandage as a healing item. Which, again, healing items are very useful here. I will be fleeing from enemies a lot more here just because, like, these fights are genuinely unsafe. <laughs> To remain in for too long. I don't have the healing items to support doing that. Here it is, McGospel. McGospel flutters in, carrying Maldessa. McGospel is a harder version of Megosp. In the same vein as Megosp, talking will do nothing, but will give a new dialogue if he is the last enemy. So, let's make sure he's the last enemy. Mime noises. Yeah, Megosp sees every battle as a performance, which I sort of envy that way of looking at things. Send in the clowns. He'll still dance. He'll dance for less time, though. Talking has no effect. 
Laughter hides the pain. I kind of love this enemy. Still want to get rid of him, though. Let's keep heading on. You also saw astigmatism much sooner here than you would have seen looks, so I think it goes without saying. Most enemies can appear at all points in the ruins in hard mode. God damn it. I knew it was going to happen, but fuck. Every time I try to flee, I accidentally press the spare button. <laughs> Fuck! It seems to me that encounter rates are actually a lot higher in hard mode too, so you have less opportunities to actually avoid the enemies. <laughs> like, these enemies are appearing every few steps without, like, any fucking remorse. Like, two encounters per room is a lot for this game. All right. This should be the last switch. Okay. Thank God that's the same. Heading over here. Just between you and me, I saw Toriel come out of here at least a while ago. Normally, she carries groceries out of here. But this time, she wasn't carrying anything. She looked disappointed. Ribbit. That's good. We can take the toy knife. Not really anything to gain from it, but whatever. And from here, I believe it plays out mostly the same. Oh dear, that took longer than I thought it would. How did you get here, my child? Are you hurt? There, there. I will heal you. I should not have left you alone for so long. It was irresponsible to try to surprise you like this. Uh, well, I suppose I cannot hide it any longer. Come, small one. Do you smell that? Uh, I assume that expression means you do. S surprise I have baked a snail pie. I thought we might celebrate your arrival. I want you to have a nice time living here. So I... Here, I have another surprise for you. So, for some... For whatever reason, she wasn't able to get butterscotch or cinnamon. This is it. A room of your own. I hope you like it. Is something burning? Um, make yourself at home. If we go to bed... We will still be left a slice of pie. Snail pie. If we check it, heal some HP and acquired taste. Some implies plural at least, but it will not be a full heal like the like it usually is. Don't think anything will change in here. That's not what I was trying to go for. Why did the skeleton want a friend because she was feeling bonely? Okay, so yeah, even the joke is the same. What about the mirror? It's you! Mirror's the same, too. Alright. I have to do something. Stay here. At this point, I am going to save. Because I... You know, I want to show what happens regardless of how you settle the battle down here. Prove to me you are strong enough to survive. I believe this fight is the same? I can't say that for sure, but so far it seems the same. Although she's doing more damage than she usually does, so maybe not. She's doing enough damage that I don't think she can actually- Oh yeah, these attacks are definitely harder. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, I think I can take one more. Yeah, I, I should have recognized that this attack was actually going faster the first time, too. I wonder if hitting the hand would end the attack early in hard mode. Takes a deep breath. What are you doing? I'm playing the video game! Oh, she is doing less damage, okay. That's good. Attack or run away. 
Okay. So she still does end the battle in the same way where she will not hit you. That's... that's kind of relieving. <laughs> the ruins are very small once you get used to them. It would not be right for you to grow up in a place like this. My expectations, my loneliness, my fear. For you, my child, I will put them aside. And that's the end of hard mode! Eh? You are ending it now? And on such a dramatic moment? That's the difficult part! Not the bullets, but accepting that it's all over! But there will be more, will there not? Maybe. Knowing the answer is... hard. Hey! Aren't you supposed to be dying or something? Well, what is the point of that now? What will you do instead? Hmm. Perhaps I will bake another pie. That last one ended up a little burnt. I thought it was good. Theoretically. It's not like I ate it all while you were fighting. Hey! Hey! Can I have some pie? You are just going to eat it all. I can help! Snoring on the floor is not help. I'm not snoring, I'm cheering you on in my sleep! Oh, you're still here? Don't you have anything better to do? Undertale. Horde mode! Coming! Maybe! Ed, don't count on it! Now what if we were to kill Toriel? I know it seems weird to show this, but I think by the way that ending went, it's pretty obvious that things will be mostly the same and... The tone is already set for how serious hard mode is taken in this game. Be good, won't you? My... child. As I was saying... And that's the end of hard mode! <laughs> you are ending it now, and on such a dramatic moment. That's the difficult part, not the bullets. But accepting that it's all over. But there will be more, will there not? Maybe. Knowing the answer is hard. Hey, aren't you supposed to be dying or something? From here it takes exactly the same route. Nothing changes depending on how you go about this boss fight. Even if you go the No Mercy route, it will still just end up being the exact same. With hard mode done, next time on Undertale, we'll be going over fun values and everyone's... Fa I forgot about that one, Genya, that scared me. We'll be going over fun values and everyone's favorite Undertale character who never appears in Undertale. See you guys then. Uh, never mind, apparently. Literally as soon as I stopped the recording, Flowey showed up on screen, so... I guess there's new dialogue for him. Hey! What's the holdup? Shouldn't she be dead by now? I've been waiting in that room for... Hard mode? Gee, you better take a picture. People are gonna think you're really cool. Not! Golly, talk about a tryhard. Pa fa tick. Uh, so are you gonna keep going or? It's over. <laughs> I knew that. Why does everyone have to be so condescending? So what's your excuse sitting around here? Don't you have anything better to- I already said that. Oh wait, that's Toby. I already said that! <laughs> uh, oh yeah, by the way, the white dog is Toby Fox.
Anyway, see y'all in the next episode.